Hi, my name is Adam Guthrie. My project is titled The Beneficiation of Clayey Soils Using Aggregate Blending and Cement Stabilization. Roads are a critical aspect of our society and economy. However, roads are expensive to build and maintain. Engineers try to find ways to make roads last longer while minimizing costs. One way to make a road last longer and improve its strength and durability is to mix the soil underneath the road with cement. This is called stabilization. However, different soils require different amounts of cement to achieve this benefit. The soil that I researched in this project is classified as a clayey soil, which means it reacts very similarly to clay. This means it has very small particles, which causes an increase in cement demand. Because cement is expensive, other alternatives are desirable to build a lower costs. One potential method of reducing the cement requirement involves the addition of crushed stone or aggregate to the clay E base. Because the aggregate has a much lower cement demand than clay, a blend of clay and aggregate would be expected to also have a lower cement demand. Furthermore, aggregate is much less expensive than cement. My research question for this project was, what effect will the addition of aggregate have on the strength of clayey soils treated with cement? I hypothesized that the addition of aggregate to the clayey soil will lower the cement concentration required to achieve the desired strength. The materials I used in this project were clayey or clay-like soil, Portland cement, water, aggregate, a capping compound, a standard proctor hammer, a steel mold, a hydraulic press, an industrial oven, and a scale. Soil samples for this project were collected in Eagle Mountain, Utah from a road construction site. Testing has already been performed on this soil without any aggregate, and the results are shown below. This is a moisture density curve. This shows that as the moisture increases, the density increases then decreases. We want the maximum density because that is where the highest compressive strength will be. For this soil without any aggregate, the maximum soil density is found at 11% water at time of compaction. This percentage was used subsequently for the rest of these compressive strength samples. This graph shows the compressive strength. We see that as the cement concentration increases, the pounds per square inch of load failure is also increasing. However, the Portland Cement Association recommends that a sample or a roadway with this treatment should have a load failure rate of 500 PSI. And this soil, even at a very high value of 9% cement, is only half of what it needs to be. That means more testing is needed. To be able to do these tests again with aggregate, I started with four samples each with 5%, which is a low value of cement, and an addition of 20% aggregate. Each were compacted using different moisture percentages. Using this, I was able to replicate the experiment and calculate a optimum moisture content and a maximum density. These values were then used for the compressive strength testing. For the compressive strength testing, I used eight samples. Each sample had a cement concentration of 5% and an addition of either 10, 20, or 30, or 40% the addition of aggregate. After compaction, samples were cured for seven days in order to gain strength. This is an industry standard. After they've been cured, for seven days, I capped the samples. Capping is a process involving putting a, the capping compound on each end of the sample. This gives the sample a smooth surface for the hydraulic press, which is shown here, to exert a load in an even 
it helps to distribute the load evenly across the whole sample. This sample has already been tested and we can tell because of the cracks. This was a load failure test. This sample failed after over 500 PSI. That's six, three tons or 6,000 pounds. The results from my testing are shown below. Our moisture density curve, which shows the moisture compared to the density, we see that with the aggregate, the moisture, the optimum moisture content with the highest density is at nine and a half percent. Nine and a half percent was then used for each of the samples for the compressive strength. We can see for the compressive strength that as the aggregate blend, as more aggregate is added, the the pounds per square inch that is the available load failure rate increases. It's able to hold more load. In fact, it appears to be increasing exponentially. We see that with the 40% blend with 5% cement, the load failure rate pa exceeded, passed, met and exceeded the recommendation by from the Portland Cement Association. In conclusion, increasing the addition of aggregate increased the compressive strength, and for a cement concentration of 5%, the target strength of 500 PSI was reached and exceeded at an aggregate addition of 40%. The addition of aggregate also lowered the optimal moisture content and increased the maximum density. This project was sponsored by my internship, and the results are being used at a construction site. This data has been able to save clients considerable money because we're able to use less cement, which is very costly, and instead use aggregate, which is much cheaper. Thanks for listening.